Hi, my name's Joey, and in June of 2023, my wife and I purchased 30 acres in the deep north woods of Maine for $35,000. This is our story in detail about buying the land, clearing the land, the preparation that it took to do all of that, building the cabin, and just our overall thoughts now looking back after owning the property for close to seven months now. This video is gonna be a compilation of all of our videos put together and really the key moments for like the direction that we were gonna go. This is a really important moment for us right here. This is the first scene from our very first episode. When we originally bought our 30 acres, we were not going to make a YouTube series about it. It wasn't until after our family and friends told us that they wanted to see what we were doing that we decided to film the process. Our land had been logged a couple months prior to us buying it. We turned the skitter row into a driveway. That's what you see us walking on right here. The puddles on the side of our driveway are thanks to Maine having the wettest year ever on recorded history. Once the driveway dried out, we were able to bring the truck all the way down it. We just didn't want to risk getting it stuck. You can see that the trail's washed out. This is the earliest video that we have of the trail to the cabin site. We pretty much hiked in the middle of the woods until we found what we wanted. When looking for our site, we didn't really take into consideration the ease of moving in materials. What we wanted was for it to be in the middle of the property on a little crest with a stream that runs by it. We were able to find a site that meets all of those and that's where we chose to build. I almost forgot to introduce our rescue, Rebby. He's seven months old in this video. He's in every single video. For the first two or three weekends, we slept out on the ground in a tent, so to put this tent platform up was a serious luxury for us. I put it up before we decided that we were going to start filming the process, but this right here, what you see, is the raw cabin site. I know it looks like nothing now, but I can't wait for you to see it at the end of the video. One of the things that I want to express in this video is that I've never been this deep out in the woods before. It's an entirely different experience to be completely submerged by force for thousands of acres with nobody around. The level of privacy it provided was almost like going into a deprivation tank. It was amazing, the silence, but then the noise at the same time. I don't have any sponsors, so every recommendation that I give is solely because I've used the product a lot. We bought this tent at Cabela's. It's the backcountry 10 person tent. I think it was around $400. I slept over 45 nights in this and have weathered some pretty brutal rainstorms in it. In all of the videos, you can tell that my wife is pregnant. We ended up having our baby in December. Since we do everything on a budget, I want to introduce my 1988 Polaris two-stroke. It's a 250. I bought it for $400 on Marketplace, and then I bought a little trailer that comes with it for $40 more. To bring out all of the supplies, we've been loading them in the back of the ATV trailer, driving them through the trail system that we made, and then hand carrying them in the rest of the way because the four-wheeler can't make it all the way to the camp yet. One of the real downsides about the land being logged was that there's brush and slash piles everywhere. That makes navigating the ATV extremely hard. But you'll see as the video goes on, we've learned to clear those piles by fire. Every single time we came out here, I had to reset the camp. Time for a nice warm meal. It helps boost morale. This shot is actually super important because right behind us is the area that we cleared out for the cabin. Keep in mind this shot when you see the cabin later on in the videos. At the end of the first video, we took some drone footage. This really shows how remote we are. I wanted to show from the road all the way down our driveway to the cabin site. This is what you're viewing now. Our driveway is a thousand feet long to the first landing. You'll be able to see on either side some of the puddles that my dog was swimming in in the beginning of this video. 
Once you reach the landing site, it's about another 300 feet to 400 feet in through the woods to get to the actual cabin building site. We're going to show you that right now. Here's the landing site. We had to navigate a trail through this winding forest to get to our perfect cabin site. Here it is right there. Let's fast forward to the back of the property. Do you see the thick tree line? That's where my land ends. We're so blessed to have all of this land. It's a dream come true. It started by watching videos like this and then making a plan. Keep in mind this shot, we do it a couple different times. You'll really see a cabin up here right before your eyes. This is the start of our second video. I'm up for the long weekend and this is where the work really gets done. I'm going to be building the foundation in this video. What we wanted to show with these drone shots was our road. This is the road that we take to get to our land. You'll notice we've done some more work to the driveway and it's dried out more, so we were able to drive the truck all the way down. We're still bringing in all the supplies by the little trailer on the back of the ATV, but the reason that this shot is so important is this is the first time that the ATV had ever made it to the actual cabin site. We work on the trail off camera and clear obstacle by obstacle. You can see it's still muddy and it's a little bit of a struggle, but I remember the feeling of accomplishment when we drove over this big slash pile that you're seeing right here. That was the pile that really held me back from bringing We were only away. gone for four days, so we ended up leaving the tent up. This was a really good call because then it made setting up camp in the afternoon not as big as a chore. We're just getting comfortable right here, and then the real work starts in the morning. The goal for tonight is to set up camp, eat good, rest up, wake up early tomorrow, and start building the cabin. Let's go. The food that night and the sleep was amazing. You can tell I woke up in the morning good fired morning. up. How'd you sleep? It was freezing last night. Glad that you brought that extra blanket. Welcome to our off-grid cabin build in our mommy and daddy's backyard. There's power at the street with the paved road. That's not this way. Ah, you're right. Welcome to our 30-acre fully remote piece of property. There's no power and there's no pavement for miles. We have 1,250 pound foundation stones that need to be moved from the landing to the cabin site. Let's. The first step is gonna be bringing all the crushed pea stone in that we can lay the foundation blocks on. As you can see, I just overloaded the small trailer. Being stuck on this trail has been a constant theme of the channel. Just getting soaked and covered in mud every day has made the adventure uh, unique. I don't know what I was thinking right here trying to wipe the mud off with a leaf. It just spread all over my arms and my clothes. Even my glasses got covered. My dad came up for the long weekend. I was so pumped to have him here. He was such a big help. Riding four wheelers with him and building the cabin and sleeping out in the tent was awesome. What you see right here is the 150 pound foundation stones. Each one of those is going to have a 6x6 six six on top of it, and that's what's going to support the foundation of it. Bringing those stones over was no joke. I can't believe that my 1988 four-wheeler stood up to the task. You'll see me bring over each one just like this. We are fortunate to have nice weather this week. You can see that a lot of the trail has dried out. It was still a rough ride over with each block, but definitely better than when the trail was soaked this scene right here is super sentimental to me this is the landing of the first foundation stone it doesn't look like much but from this stone we laid all the others and we really built the foundation i love this shot you can really see how rough the trail is we ended up choosing the foundation blocks that we did 
because if you look at the land there's so many roots and rocks and granite boulders i just felt like it was going to be too hard to dig down and be able to bury the poles in maybe for my next cabin but i had absolutely no building experience before this and so this was the best plan that we could come up with it took a good chunk of the day to move all 12 foundation stones over i can't believe how handy this little 40 dollars dump trailer is each stone got dropped just like that and then moved into place big shout out to my wife right here this is the reason that the video has over a hundred thousand views in its first three months thanks for clearing out the spot babe without you this cabin could have never been built This was the best method that we found to use the foundation stones. Right now I'm going to make a true 90 degree corner so that I can make sure that my lines are snapped correctly and that I can lay my blocks correctly. Now it's time to fill the area with the crushed pea stone. These are the rocks that you saw me throw into the ATV trailer when I got it stuck. I'm going to lay down a nice healthy foundation of them. And then I'm going to try to get the block as close to level as possible. My hopes are that the pea stone is going to allow for drainage underneath the foundation stones so that they don't move. You can tell that I'm awkward with the tape measure. It took me to build the entire exterior to get used to running the tape and just using the power tools. My friend Cricket who passed away told me get yourself a big shiny metal Stanley and so that's what I use and you'll be able to see it in all the videos. 90% of all my tools come from a Ryobi package that I bought for about $300. It came with two drills, a saw, and a sawzall, and a couple other components. Those are what I use to build the cabin. I guess they're not the most professional tools but honestly I've never had an issue with them. I placed the guide on the first six foundation stones, poured more pea stone down, and really got to leveling them. My plan was to rough them in as much as possible before doing the fine tuning. I would say that it worked well. We got six blocks laid, my back is broken, my arms are beat, my hands are ripped up, and this is going actually pretty smooth. So, can't beat that. Dad's bringing over all the wood, and that is the biggest help. And uh, we're just gonna keep going on these blocks, man, and try to put this base of this cabin up. Having a positive attitude and loving to work hard are keys to making it out here. It's so brutal, it's easy to get lost in negativity, but when you really look at the bigger picture and how blessed we are to be here and building a cabin, it's easy to remain grateful. Here you can see our technique for leveling the blocks. We leveled them pretty much one axis at a time, using a little stick to prop them up and then put the pea stone underneath. And then we would jump on them and stamp them down to make sure that they weren't going anywhere. There's that stick I needed to move the rest of them. And with that, now it's time to put the frame on. Let's cut these six by sixes. Let's get these two by six pressure treat up and let's start framing. It's so good to be at this point. When we first bought this place, this land was so rugged and inhospitable. I never thought that we were gonna get the opportunity. Like sometimes when we would come out here, it, it would just be so brutal. And to have the cabin foundation laid out now is, uh, 
it's a move from going watching those off-grid videos to actually being a part of it is is wild we decided to place six by sixes on top of our foundation stones these posts are going to support the entire structure we didn't have a saw big enough to cut them out so i marked them with the square and cut them out with my chainsaw Right here you can see us attaching the 2x6s to the 6x6s to make the outer rim joist. I'm a new builder so I have two regrets with the framing that I built here. My first regret is that I wish I would have used 2x10s or 2x8s. That way I could have supported a little bit more weight and I could have had bigger insulation in the floor. My second qualm with the structure that I built is I wish I would have cut the 6x6s and put a notch in them for the 2x6 in the back to ride on top of. I ended up remedying that problem in the later videos, but that was one of the things that a lot of people mentioned that was brought to my attention. Dad, thank you so much for your help. You coming up and moving all those materials and spending time with Janelle and Rebel and I really, really made our weekend. Thank you again. To be out here and to just have this this far, to have our footings down and to have all of our six by sixes standing in the right space where they need to, our decks level, we're gonna do the joists. I'm just overwhelmed with joy and emotion right now i mean this has been one hell of a ride from buying the place from cutting the trail in like this is what makes the off-grid experience this is what makes the roughing it experience it's just so much more appreciated when every single thing that you bring in has to be like thought of you have to be so mindful when you're out there, it's like you just get the joy over the smallest things that you would just take for granted in your daily life, especially to raise my daughter. Like I want to be able to say that like me and like her mother came out here and like built this with her in mind as a place for our family to go and, and, and enjoy and, you know, just to be out of nature. Like there's so much digital noise all of the time and just to come out here and it's, it's just another world. It, it's, it really is. We, just right place, right time, right motivation. It's the next morning and we were woken up by a rebel barking at a moose that was about 100 yards off from our cabin. If you pay attention to the shirts that I wear in the video, most of them are about painting. I own a small painting company and absolutely love wearing my own gear. All right, enough fooling around. Let's get these joists up so I can get back on my way home. Right here you can see that I'm marking where the joists need to go and then I'm going to come and lay them in.
I mark them on the other side just to make sure that they line up perfectly. As you can tell, I'm still working on my tape measuring skills. It doesn't become fluid in my hand until about the end of the build. There I am with my good old Ryobi saw. It's a small blade, but I've cut so much with it and I've never had any issues. I really thought a lot about the history of building and builders that have come before me and uh, how lucky I am to have battery pack tools that are just so readily available. Uh, I couldn't imagine putting this together by hand without power tools that would have been with outside of my skill set for sure. Pretty much in the middle of the foundation is where we were eating dinner in the last video when I told you to mark the spot in your mind. I can't believe that we have this big of a platform out here. I have no building experience prior to the platform that I'm standing on now, so to put this foundation up was slow and it was a learning experience, definitely. As you're about to see, I'm still an amateur drone pilot, but I love the footage. The drone really allows the perspective of how deep out in the wilderness we actually are. I love that it gets to show the thousands of acres of nothingness around us. This is my favorite place to be in the entire world. We're about to roll into the third video we have ever made. I'm really proud of the intro, so I'm going to leave it in here for you guys to watch. So many materials got moved during this stage of the process. Build a remote cabin, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Hi, my name is Joey and welcome to our remote cabin build. This spring we bought 30 acres of completely off-grid land in the deep north woods of Maine. We're trying to put a cabin up before the snow falls. This is my interpretation of the most effective, simple, and affordable cabin that I can build. Welcome to Practical Forest and Farm. What's up? I'm excited to introduce my cousin Job to the channel. He's a master carpenter and he's going to be helping with all the framing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Today, the hardest part of the day is going to be getting the actual materials to the site. That seems to be a really common theme in our off-grid location, but nothing's going to be cooler than a hidden cabin in the woods that's not really accessible by anything other than a footpath. Let's do this. I want to start this video breakdown by saying, man, I really love my cousin Job. He's got a big heart. He's very honest. He works hard. He shows up five and a half hour ride each way. Never complained about it once. Slept out in the tent with me during freezing temperatures and uh, really just helped me so much. He taught me how to carry the sheets. We laughed every time I fell. It was a good time. Thanks for coming out, Job. Each sheet of Avantech was wet and around 70 pounds. I'd like to introduce my cousin's dog, Marty. Marty's a good boy. Moving these sheets through the trail was one of the biggest physical challenges I've ever done in my life and I'm so much harder now because of it. This drone shot's amazing. You can see just how much materials we've moved to the site in preparation to really get this foundation going. Now that we've got all the materials landed, we're going to put an inside ledger board on this, put two more 6 by 6s sitting on the post to really sure up this foundation. Thanks everybody in the comment section for letting me know, I appreciate it. And then we're going to be putting on the plywood under the bottom, throwing the insulation in, and then we're going to be putting the Advantech on top. 
I saw Dave Whipple from Bush Radical put a ledger board on his. I should have done it in the first place before I put the joists up, but like I said, I'm a new builder. I'm glad to have it on there now. Right here you see a good shot of my company's logo. I own Integrity Painting and Restoration LLC and if anybody ever wants to support our page and give our Facebook a like or leave us a 5 star review on Google, we would love you forever. I'm going to point out to you this stance that I do when I'm crouched down that keeps putting this unfortunate mud stain on my pants. My wife thinks it's hilarious. Anything that was drilled into a 6x6 got a big lag that went with it. That's what we're drilling in right now. I will say my cousin's Milwaukee saw cut much better than the Ryobi does. Now that the ledger board's in, it's time to put the plywood on the bottom so we can pop the insulation in. This right here is gonna be the second most dreaded part of the task. The first one was moving in the materials, now we gotta crawl under this. This scene is important because it's the first time that we've ever used two cameras to show the same action. It looked pretty seamless. This was a constant, Rebby was always in our business. One of the things that you have to do, like know about being remote is you gotta roll with the punches. We bought fancy mics so that everybody could hear us in crisp audio. And uh, I forgot one cord for the thing and I can't source it when I'm all the way out here. And so it's just one of those things that you gotta learn to be flexible about. I could sleep under this thing now. This is gonna be a big cabin, buddy. Putting most of the plywood on the bottom wasn't that hard. Only when it came to cutting notches out of it and then seating it against the ledger board. Other than that, it went pretty smoothly. It is amazing to be at this point right now. The sun's just starting to go down, but we have uh, probably two hours of daylight left. We're gonna push through. We're gonna cut the blocks, block these joists just for a little bit more stabilization. This platform is so sturdy, I can't believe it. Um, it you can't shake it at all. And um, we're gonna take the chainsaw, we're gonna cut these six by sixes off, and we're gonna put the insulation in and lay the Advantech flooring on. Hopefully by tonight. I love this chainsaw. I saved up for it and went down to my local powerhouse and bought it. Some were meant to carve the David. Some were meant to paint the Mona Lisa. Some were meant to use the chainsaw. They call this one slicing the Berjudo. I had to use R19 insulation. If I would have framed with 2x8s, I could have used R30. That was the drawback that I was talking about earlier in the video. We'll see this winter how it holds up. I'm guessing with the wood stove that we have, we won't be able to feel any noticeable difference. It's getting late. Let's throw some Advantech over this insulation. We'll come back at it first thing in the morning. Good morning. I hope you bought an extra blanket in the tent last night because it was freezing. It was like 38 degrees and uh, definitely didn't sleep the best, but ready to rear at it today. Today's a wicked important step. We're going to put on all the insulation and uh, we're going to put this Advantech over it. Everything out here takes twice as long because that's just remote building. That's the truth of it. Like if this was a house that I could just drive my truck up to, uh, this thing would have been already framed. But since every piece of material needs to be hand brought out, um, really makes the experience more mindful. You got to think of every single item you're going to bring out. This is something that's important to me and my family, and I wouldn't want to fly through this anyway. So for this to just go at the speed it is, I get to hang out with my family. We get to do our thing at kind of like a reasonable pace. I, I love it. I love it out here. Let's get this thing 
Let's get this platform finally done, man. Part two of the video. Let's go. So what you see here is we're just putting in the insulation and then putting the Advantech on top of it. Nailing in the first piece of Advantech felt amazing. It was another milestone in the progress of getting this thing done. About three years ago I built a wall and that's when I bought that Dewalt framing gun that you'll see in the video. I've never had any other framing guns, but it's battery packed, it's easy to charge and carry with me. It jams every once in a while, but that's not that big of a deal to me. It really came in handy during this entire build, so I would recommend it. We got all of the lumber for the entire build at a local mill that's been running since the 1800s. It's about a 30 minute drive from my camp. To hand up these last two pieces of flooring felt amazing. Not gonna lie, I believe that each one of those sheets is about 90 pounds. To bring them through was definitely a challenge, but to lay them on was so satisfying. Cousin Job, I want to thank you so much for making the five and a half hour ride up here and helping me move all the materials and really guiding this last part of the process. Without you, this dream couldn't have been achieved. Again, thank you so much. We look forward to celebrating and having you up at the land often. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. Right here, I talk about thanking everybody for all of the support in our channel being monetized. Let's move into the next video in the series. This one is about putting the walls up. I'm really proud of this intro as well, so let's get into hey, it. Hey, I'm Joey with Practical Forest and Farm, and here we are at my 30-acre off-grid piece of property in the deep north woods of Maine. We're building a cabin, and hopefully we're going to have it tight before the snow comes. It's October 5th. It's getting cold. The leaves are starting to change. It is so beautiful out here. We're going to be up for the long weekend framing this bad boy out. We've got the windows, and we've got the roofing. Let's see how far we can get. If you're new to the channel, we've been building an off-grid cabin on our 30 acres in Maine. Our vision for this cabin is for it to be completely remote. We want it 100% surrounded by the forest with only a footpath in. Yes, it makes the build more difficult, but in the end, I feel like we're going to have a one-of-a-kind property to enjoy. That being said, all of the materials behind me have to be hand carried in. Some of them can be brought in by the four wheeler, the two by fours, but we have some 16 foot pieces and some 12 foot pieces that are just gonna have to be hand carried in. There's work to be done, so let's get doing it. Filming after driving six hours and setting up camp was definitely a chore. Also, I'd like to give the biggest shout out to my wife who usually films for me when I'm out here, so this is taking twice as long. Love you, baby. Wish you were out here with me. Welcome to base camp. To you, it might just look like some green tarp over a platform and a shabbily built tent platform, but to me, I can really see my wife and my daughter and me enjoying this space with our family, with people that we love. I feel like this is going to become a beautiful field here. I'm prepared to put in the work that it takes to turn this property into the property of my dreams. The work is totally the reward as well. I'm loving every step of the process. I don't wish that it went any faster than this. And the fact that I get to see the seasons turn here while I'm doing it just makes it all the better. Also, I want to show you guys something pretty cool. The next step is putting the tent up. Gotta get out of the shot so I can do the flicking thing. I definitely feel a deeper connection to the land and the animals on the land after sleeping in the tent for so long. The protection of a cabin is going to be nice, but I feel like I got a really authentic experience of what it is like to be remote. 
Uh, I've been sleeping in this tent every time I come out here for the last six months. So I've spent a good amount of time on this land, you know, just pretty much exposed. I, I've loved it so far. Awesome, now that we have base camp set up, it's time to peel back the tarp so we can get a staging area for the wood that I'm about to bring in. Our platform is completely dry. The tarps let no water get to it. I am excited to be at this point. This is awesome. So here's my little spot that I cleared out. I'm going to unhook the trailer from the four-wheeler and I'm going to start dropping two by fours here. The local mill would drop off all of the materials I would need for the weekend the day before I came up. That's how this wood pile keeps replenishing this itself. This is a 1988 Polaris two-stroke. Uh, it's called the Trail Boss. I bought it for $400 on Marketplace. I have not done a single thing to it other than put air in the tires. Practical force, baby, making it work. You can really notice how much the seasons have changed by all the leaves on the ground. I think this shot's amazing. I always show up in the afternoon and that afternoon light just really cast properly for the camera. This is also the first night that I've ever spent all by myself out there. To be this deep out in the woods by myself, um, just with the sun going down, I'm able to reflect. I wanted to take some time to thank everybody for their support. I Looking back on the footage, it's funny to see how many times I give little thankful speeches. I guess that's just something that I like to do. Anyways, let's fast forward to the next day. Good morning. I want to introduce the undisputed heavyweight champion of off-grid cabin building and material lugging. My cousin made the ride back up again six hours this time with traffic from all the leaf-peeping tourists that are clogging up the uh, interstate. Good to be out here. Today's plan is we're going to strip back the tarps on this and we're going to start framing out the walls, hang the T111 and uh, hopefully throw the roof rafters on today. Let's do this. I'm always making an ambitious game plan, but usually the project takes double the time I imagine it will. Check out this fancy tape measure skill. That's progress. You can see I upgraded to a bigger Ryobi saw. This one cuts through the 2x4s much easier. First we made our top and bottom plates for the side walls. Then we cut all of our 8 foot studs to length to fit. The plan is to go an 8 foot wall in the back, two 8 foot walls in the sides, and a 12 foot wall in the front. Obviously the 8 foot walls will have to have a triangle that extends up to the 12 foot piece, but we're going to make that after we framed in the 8 foot wall section. Because this was my first build, I really couldn't figure out where the windows were supposed to go, so I built the wall and then I cut out some of the studs and then framed in the window section. Only 22 more sheets of T111 to be moved in. Hey, I'd like to talk to you guys about sweat equity. After moving in the Advantech sheathing, the T111 wasn't nearly as heavy, but it was definitely still awkward to hike through the trail that we made. Right here you can see me house wrapping it. I really wanted to go above and beyond for this and just make it as watertight as possible. So we house wrapped the entire structure. We're going to put this sheet of T111 on and then we're going to stand the wall and then cut out where the window needs to go. To you. You can see as we stand the wall up, I went a little gung-ho and I shot on the sheet of T111 before I had house wrapped the frame in that piece. I had to go back and fill in the house wrapping after we stood the wall up. I didn't make this mistake for the rest of the structure. Again, being a new builder, there were so many learning curves and just things that I didn't think about. I'm so glad that I got this experience. The second wall went much quicker. I was definitely happy with the results. 
in my next cabin I'm going to plan where the windows go before I frame it out so I can just frame for them but this as an amateur framer for a first time effort was definitely a good way to learn yep. Time to throw a couple of sheets of T111 on this and stand it up. Keep going. I had originally planned for all eight foot walls, but since my wife wasn't there and I was in charge of calling the shots, I said let's go big or let's go home. So we ended up doing a 12 foot wall. We built the wall one eight foot section at a time. You'll be able to see the process right here. Being a painter, the height doesn't bother me, so that was nice. It was a little awkward screwing them in because our nail gun battery had died and we have it on the charger, but you can see that it comes along nicely. We've got a big 6 by 5 foot window going in right here. So this is me trying to figure out where I need to frame the window in. It's getting a little bit too late to film. We're just going to button up the little last loose ends, putting and framing in the window, putting on the last of the top plates. Then we're going to run to the store tomorrow. We're actually out of wood. Grab some uh, grab some wood from the mill and then uh, come back here and uh, we'll check you guys tomorrow. Good morning. It's the next day and uh, in typical New England fashion, it said it wasn't going to rain last night and it definitely did on the weather schedule. It says it's going to rain about 1 o'clock. What we're going to try to do is put these rafters up. Job is going to be cutting all the rafters. Rafters? Rafters? And uh, I'm going to go around. I'm going to double block all of our window frames. We use 2x4s for the walls and we use 2x8s for the rafters of the roof. We made a template that fit all the way down and then we cut each piece the same way. This was really helpful. By reinforcing these corners like this, it shirred up the whole frame. I'm going from this piece this two by four right here into this back piece right here if you can see that on the camera and then I come in from this side so I lock all three pieces together it tightens it up one of the joys of being out here is when it rains you're just stuck in it I believe that through the entire time that we've owned the land, we've only been up there for three sunny weekends. The rain was definitely a factor. It was the rainiest year in history for the state of Maine. To be at this point in the build is so exciting. You can really see how big the structure is going to be. It's got a nice overhang. We made a template of the rafter last night and Job cut them all out today. And now it's time just to hang them and tack them on there. As you can see, Job went gangbusters on the rafters and on the blocking. He really spearheaded that entire project. Welcome to Northern Maine where it gets cold and you got to put on the sweatshirt even though you're doing manual labor. Uh, still waiting on it to rain, just trying to push forward, definitely. Try not to let the weather get the mood down, keeping the morale up. 
Uh, right now, I've cut a bunch of the blocks. We're going to be blocking the wall out. Job's going to be finishing cutting up the rafters so that we can throw them on there. And, uh, and then it's my goal just to get the whole place blocked out so it's super tight. And then I believe we're going to start passing. So pretty much what I just said is I'm going to handle the easy work and Job is going to do the hard work. If you look at my blocking, it's all pretty crooked. I would give myself about a 4 out of 10. Next cabin, I'll have to do better. The last rafter is installed and it's definitely starting to storm. We're going to continue to block it, tighten it, and then we're going to be getting out of here. Last rafter. Woo! We figured it would be best to tie in all the corners with sheets of T111 before we left it for the weekend. We knew that there was going to be some 40 mile an hour winds and we really wanted to make sure this thing was shared up. Notice how I didn't forget to put the house wrap on this time? Making improvements. We're going to try to watertight the back of it, even though the roof's not on. Then we're going to try to run tarps um, so that we can just minimize any water getting into the structure. And uh, it's been one very long weekend. We're here on Thursday, Friday, today, Saturday. And uh, the weather says it's just going to rain for like the next two or three days. So we're going to get out of here. The ride home is five hours. And... Um, that's a long way. At the end of every weekend when you've worked really hard and you've slept in the tent when it's been freezing out, the five hour, six hour ride home is just never appealing. I wouldn't trade it for anything though because it's definitely made me who I am. The goal now is to get everything put away and to cover the Advantech with the tarp yeah. just for the coming storm. I think I'm going to put... To be at this point is just so incredible. When we first got this plot of land, it was inhospitable. There wasn't even a trail cut to this spot of the property. Through so much effort, it's finally become what it is today. It's such a beautiful thing to be here at this point. Like just thinking about just even clearing the site to just having this 12 foot wall up. Um, I can't believe it. I want to thank everybody so much for their support and for watching these videos and your kind words and everybody that's following this journey. Like thank you for being on my team. That's so important to me. It really is. I was going to do this and not even take a video or not even do a video series or even have a YouTube or I don't know. I guess I got inspired by other YouTubers and I wanted to show what my idea of the vision looks like. And I'm just over the moon to be able to share like what I think my blueprint of living off grid looks like. It's starting to rain. We still got a little bit of work here to do before I'm out. Just everybody, thank you so much. I'm Joey. This is Practical Force. To have never built anything and then been standing in that structure was absolutely life-changing. Let's roll into the next video. This intro looks a little choppy. It was because it was raining, so I almost look like I'm behind a green screen. But again, I put a lot of work into it, and I'd love for you to see it. ...property in the deep north woods of Maine. It's the middle of October, and it's freezing at night and it's cold out during the day. We're trying to put up a cabin so that we have a nice place to shelter ourselves from the elements. This is my plan to get off grid. Today we're gonna be sheathing and roofing the cabin to get it tight from the elements. This is such a crucial point. This land that you see behind me, we've been clearing by fire and just to have a cabin this deep and this remote out in the woods is mind blowing. When I first bought this piece of property, I thought there was no way we were going to be able to put a cabin up here and just through hard work, dedication and help from family, we've been able to make this happen. Last night we had a brutal storm come through. It dumped two inches of rain in the matter of like an hour. Everywhere is completely flooded. 
The town that's nearest to this property that's 30 minutes away has no power when we rolled through. We, I had no clue that the power was off because we don't have any power here. That was funny. It was like it didn't affect me whatsoever. So what we're going to do is the storm that came through knocked off our waterproofing. So we're going to waterproof it up again. We're going to hang the T11 right now and then we are going to sheath the roof. Working in the inclement weather was a common theme in season one. I'm really hoping that this summer the weather's nicer. I would love a sunny day to work on my cabin. Warming up and drying off by this fire is definitely essential right now. It's about 45 degrees out. That fire that you just saw is how we've been clearing the area around the cabin. We've burnt about an acre and a half worth of brush. It's going to be a beautiful field next year. I can't wait to show you guys. Now you can swing it towards me. Yeah, I put one in up top too. Putting the T111 on was my second favorite part of the entire project. It really felt like some serious progress was being made. Building in a forest is a lot different than building in a cleared lot. Like you wouldn't imagine how hard it is just to line up the... At this point in the project, I've become pretty comfortable working with the power tools. I really like using the framing gun. It's very satisfactory when you shoot in a bunch of nails on a stud. Now that we have the back wall t 111 and we have the sides 90% t 111 we feel as though the structure is strong enough to where we're going to block out the center of the joists and then we're going to lay the roof on. To have the roof on is going to definitely be a blessing. Hopefully we can get this thing closed off enough where we can sleep in it instead of the tent. Not going to lie, sleeping in the tent. At this point with two smelly, muddy dudes sleeping in a tent with two smelly, muddy dogs, it's getting pretty old. This cabin frame is going to feel like the Ritz once we get to stay in it. Oh, 9 sixteenths. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the middle line's eight, so it's literally one line above. What is the measurement again, bro? 9 16th. 14 and 9 16 sorry wait one second okay yeah 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 i gotta measure it 15 times i mean you see how many times during this build i've got measured <laughs> i can barely write i swear to god i didn't even really go to school at, at eventually at one point i was just like i'm never coming to school you're the only guy that can come up man that's because you do your own hustle and that's why i, I respect it so much If you are watching this video and having an off the grid cabin or having your own piece of land or property is something that you're interested in, I would love to tell you how I do it. And I own a couple different businesses and I would love to talk to anybody about home ownership, property ownership, business ownership, financial independence, financial freedom, what it really means to own your own time. Uh, I would love to teach anybody who wants a hustle how to hustle, definitely. Let me know in the comments below. I'll tell you exactly how I found this piece of property, exactly how I bought it, how much I paid for it. None of this is going to be a secret. This is the blueprint that I'm trying to give other people. And this is my first run at the blueprint. I think that uh, my third cabin will probably go up a little bit easier than this. And I still mean that. I'm fired up to teach other people how to be their own business. There's nothing more radical than providing for yourself. When cutting the blocks for the roof joists, I really wish I would have brought my saw horses. That's one of the things you'll see in the video. For some reason, I can never remember to bring my saw horses up. One of the things I did when I was cutting out the blocks was I also cut the blocks out for the 6x6 six six that are going to sit underneath the rim joist. You'll see what I mean in this next clip. 
You can tell these are cut perfectly to fit with some tension so that they're really making full contact with the pad as well as the six by six. This just reinforced this. I love this move. Thank you to everybody in the comments who suggested that I do this. I really feel like this was a necessary step. There's two things I want to say about this clip. First one is you can really see the watch I'm wearing. I always wear G-Shock Casio. I have them in all different colors. G-Shock, if you watch this video, sponsor me. Another thing is I always read the comments. Everyone in the comments told me that I need to put bracing underneath the rim joist. It's so dark here in Maine so quickly. We just finished blocking them out. Haven't even put a sheet up on the roof and it's already almost pitch dark. The days are never long enough in the forest. Let's see what tomorrow holds. Good morning. Last night in the tent was freezing. All the more push to get this cabin sealed up today. The weather is going to be about 45 degrees all day. Might hit 50 with this sunshine that we're getting. That's pretty nice. We got a big fire going and we like to stoke it in the morning and then stoke it at lunchtime so we can come up and warm up by it while we're building the cabin. Gosh, this is how I've been re-clearing my land. Just chopping up the brush bringing it over to the fire and clearing it. I've cleared about an acre around this cabin just doing that. This is where I want a beautiful field or this is where I'd like my vegetable garden to be. This land was logged. That's how you buy affordable land. Let the log company log it. It is what it is. I wasn't gonna hold it for a timber investment. I wanted to build a cabin and have a spot to enjoy out here. So it makes sense for me. There's something really primal about keeping a fire going 24 seven. So one of my favorite things to do is just get it really stoking. Time to put the first piece of sheathing on. This is really exciting. The process is going to go. We're going to sheathe it. Then we're going to put the roof paper on it. Then we will put a metal roof on it. That's, that's good, and then you need to drop down on your end, and it should be pretty square. That feels pretty good right there. I'm like completely flush on my end. It should be. Yep, that looks good. I know. Go ahead, pull it down. Standing on the roof right now. The view is amazing from up here. Standing on my roof, playa. Woo, sheet by sheet, this thing's getting done. 45 degrees out right now. Woo. I'm going no hat for the rest of the video. This is gonna be the last sheet for the roof right here, just a four by eight piece, slap it on, shoot it down with the nail gun, and then this roof is officially sheathed. We've got the roof paper, we're gonna paper it, staple it down. We do have the metal roofing, but uh, we're gonna hang some more sheets of T111 before we bring the metal roofing out on this. So we're just gonna see how far we can get this weekend. Uh, came up on Thursday again. It's now Saturday, so it's pretty slow moving. Oh, and the sun comes out for the last sheet. Look at how beautiful it is out here. That humongous raging fire that you saw earlier is now just burnt to a little tiny pile. 
Wow, it is so sick to be out here. Last sheet. This is twice as heavy. I know a couple of guys in the roofing industry, and I want to give my hat off to them. Roofing is hard work. That's what I learned from this project, definitely. This was a small roof. These guys are doing huge square footage every day. Much respect to the roofing community. Now that the entire roof is papered, we're going to go and pre-drill out all of the 16 foot metal sheets. They line up perfectly. And uh, the goal for today is just get this roof out of the way so that we don't have to deal with it anymore. Ooh, they probably don't sell this bit down at the uh, convenience store. Awesome, we just pre-drilled the whole metal roof. Check it out. Halfway, so you don't scratch the other sheet bad. Okay. Any bit of sliding is harsh. Yes, I'm tired and yes, I want to get off the roof, but I also want to make it back to my wife tomorrow so that we can spend half the day together. So I'm just going to keep going until there's no more light. Ready, watch out. Here it comes, the last 16 foot piece of metal up on the roof just for that edge over where Job's at. Can't believe that we're at this point. It's looking so good. We still got to cut out this back window, ADHD. Let's just stick to the roof. We're gonna do the roof. Let's do this. What is Marty, a two stroke hitting power band? Good morning. It was another like 38 degrees in the tent last night, but I'm feeling refreshed this morning. It's Sunday morning. We've been out here since Thursday and uh, we have most of all of the T111 hauled over. I've spared you guys from the video footage of me just hauling countless sheets over with my cousin. Uh, if you want to check out what it looks like for us to haul all these materials over, Watch the other videos that we have. This is, I think, our sixth video that we've put out. So if you like this content, we have a lot more content, like hours worth. So right now, we're just gonna move and go this entire side up. We're gonna make sure that this is all watertight, and then I'm gonna come back in, and I'm gonna cut out the windows and do as much work from inside the cabin as possible, just because it's getting so brutal out already. It's October 15th, the weather's getting cold, and we're gonna have this thing closed in. Let's do it. If you can see this block, Job came in and put, preemptively put this block in so that we can balance the sheathing on it, and then we're gonna come by later and just knock it off with a hammer. Here on the trailer behind me is going to be the last sheet of T111 that we need to move in for this project and 
after that, every single sheet is brought in. We brought in all of the Advantech flooring by hand. We uh, hauled in all the sheathing for the roof. We hauled in all the sheathing for the bottom of the foundation. And now this is the last sheet of T111. Future videos determined that that statement was not true. This is actually the third to last piece of T111 that I've had to move in on this project. Either way, look at the trail. If you can remember how we first had it when we were walking by in the beginning of the video till now, it's a night and day difference. Yes, the rains destroyed it, but we pretty much have a wooden bridge now over all of the bad parts. It's so cool to see how big the structure is in the background. Hauling the material in like that, sleeping in the freezing cold tent, and just being out in the merciless wilderness really separates the boys from the men. Right there looks like 60 and a half. This cabin's really coming together. That's one more side that's down. The previous night, Rebel did not sleep in the tent. He stayed out all night roaming the forest. He does weird stuff when my wife's not around. So you can see him falling asleep during the day right here. I had run out of the blue house wrap, but we had a bunch of roof wrap. This was more thick and I felt like gave a better water barrier anyway, so overkill, but it wasn't a big deal at all. Here's the cabin. The entire front of the cabin, all the way through, is destroyed. How deep is that? Just, this is what it looks like. It's everywhere. Yeah. This ain't making it in. Kobe. Nope. Kobe. There's no good spot to balance this ladder. We took the exterior of the cabin to about 90% in this video. We still need to put two or three more sheets of T111 on it, cut out the windows, and put trim on it. One day it's going to have a front porch, but for now it's pretty mind-blowing that we have this big of a structure out in the woods. It's 20 by 12. That beautiful green roof. I'm so proud of this video and this build. This one was a hard one, especially with the inclement weather. For our last video that we're about to get into, my wife actually comes back up to see the cabin get closed. And we talk about how much we spent on the land, how much we've spent on the cabin, and just what our total investment is and what the future for our channel holds. Let's get into that one right now. Hi, I'm Joey, and this is my wife, Janelle, and you're watching Practical Forest and Farm. Here we are in the deep woods of Maine on my 30-acre off-grid property. We bought this property in the very beginning of July, and it's now November 10th. It's freezing every single night, and the weather is about 35 degrees out right now. We have a 12 by 20 cabin built, as you can see right here. We're going to be closing up our cabin for the season. Last time when we came up, we put the metal roof on the cabin and we sheeted it with T111 about 95% of the way. We didn't get to cut the windows out, 
but my goal over these next two days is to get the cabin completely boarded up with T111 so to have the siding finished and just get it uh, proofed out for the winter. It's hard to tell from the videos, but my wife and I are going to be having our first kid in two months and the weather's getting really inhospitable out here. And so I'm going to close it up for the season and then come back at it in the spring when it's a little nicer out and really make it a nice spot that my family can come and enjoy. It's awesome to see how empty the trailer is. I just went down to the mill. I remember when this thing was stacked up with like, you know, multiple boards of T111 that had to be moved. The Advantech flooring had to be moved in by hand. Uh, so to see only two sheets of T111 to move over, that's amazing. Now I just need to block up the rafters and just put a couple more two by four blocks in on the framing on the inside uh, before we close this up. When we first started this project, hauling these sheets over was by far the hardest part and I just feel like I'm so much tougher. What used to defeat me is now pretty much like it's clockwork. I know I'm going to pick this up and make it all the way over there. Let's you go. can tell in this video I'm really excited to be out there with my wife again. I had missed her coming out. It's awesome to see how well worn the trail is now. Welcome to camp. Can you see how beautiful the structure is? This used to just be deep forest, and now you can actually see the cabin from pretty far away. It's amazing how big of a structure we built out here. It's pretty remote. I'm new to construction, so we built this in phases. I didn't cut the door out yet, because I don't have a door for it yet. So this is the window that we didn't sheath. And I'm just going to be taking all the stuff out of it that I want to bring home for the season. Loading up all the stuff I want to keep here. And then this is where my first sheet of T111 is going to go right over the window port. And I'll come back in in the summer and cut it out. This is the first time that Janelle has actually stood in the cabin. She helped build the platform, but now the walls and the roof are on. Uh, what do you think? It's pretty awesome. For anyone who's new to the channel, uh, we're in the deep north woods of Maine and this is our 12 by 20 cabin. It's got a 12 foot wall over here. This is where our front door is going to be and uh, it's a salt style roof. So it just sheds to one side. So this wall's 12 feet. This wall is eight foot tall. And obviously this wall started as an eight foot tall wall and then goes up to the pitch. To be this deep out in the woods and have this roof over my head right now is pretty insane. We're going to be tidying up the inside and just making sure it's nice for Right after I it. moved the second piece of wood, I saw two mice and I had to ask them nicely to leave the premises. After that, we knew that we were going to have to block any entrance that they could get into before we left. So we decided to cut out blocking and to use rat spray foam behind it. Pack engaged. The roof has a 15 degree angle in it, so I'm gonna cut a 15 degree angle. Uh, I'm an inch off. I cut it to, it needs to be 13 and three fourths, and I cut it to 14 and three fourths. Dude, really? I don't, I don't think that's as funny as you think it is. I really just don't laugh about that. A hundred thousand plus people might see this and this like I got a big old mud stain on my butt in an unfortunate area that looks like it is something that it is not. You see that? That's the angle of the roof. Now let's see if it fits. Good morning. Sunset yesterday was at 4.30, so we worked until about 4 and got out of there. And uh, we're back early this morning. It's about 30 degrees out right now, so pretty cold. We've got a couple hours of work to put in to uh, close down our cabin for the season. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. 
And then I want to give the property a little walk and just recap like what we've actually done since owning the property and just talk about a little bit about uh, the pricing and what it costs to own something like this. So stick around to the end of the video and I'm going to explain and go through in depth um, how we bought this property, how much it costs to build this cabin so far, and just even unexpected costs of having an off-grid site. So let's do this. I've got to cut a 15 degree angle in all of these because the roof is at a 15 degree angle so that the blocking sits better in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I've already cut out all the blocks to the right size. So just literally putting that edge on them, putting them in, tacking them in, and then that's going to be good enough to keep out any um, squirrels or mice. I love that you can see the scale of the walls. Like as I'm standing next to them, I'm standing on a little pile of uh, wood right now. Full size walls, big enough ceiling for a loft. This turned out to be, you know, twice as big and twice as expensive as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <sighs> This is like draft and mouse proof spray. So we're just gonna be spraying all the blocking that I put in just in case they wanna to try to chew through it or something. Uh, I just wanna make sure that there's, this is not a you know mouse hotel. Uh, this is my house, Mr. Mouse. Fifteen and th in one eighth. Fourteen and five fifth. Five sixteenths. Fourteen and three sixteenths. Fourteen and seven sixteenths. Just everything right here comes with us. Everything there stays, right? This is the thumbnail right here. All right, sorry mom that you just had to watch Janelle seven months pre pregnant climb down the ladder, but it was supervised. And she one time did take that warehouse training safety course. No clue why they had her in the warehouse, but yeah, that was... So she knows how to climb a ladder properly, apparently. I've installed two wooden blocks. One right here, one right here. I'm going to pick the sheet up. I'm going to put the sheet on the wooden blocks. I'm going to hold it up, line it up the best that I can, tack it in, and then shoot the whole piece in. Let me get that out of my way for now. Now that I have that sheet up, I just need to cut a half sheet, hang it up there. It's already blocked from the inside and then I'm gonna be calling it done for the winter and uh, coming back at it in the summer. This is, a, this is a big structure to be out here, definitely. I keep saying that, but I can't believe that where I was standing was just trees and brush. Like I cut a couple trees to clear this site out and uh, moved, I don't know, an acre's worth of slash from the logging operation to clear this spot out. Cool to really see it coming together, definitely. All right, one more. Let's cut this half sheet. I just closed my pencil up in the cabin, so I had to go to the truck for a pen. And uh, my chalk line's broken, so I'm gonna take a couple measurements on this thing, line up a two by four, and try to draw the straightest line that I can on it.
And just like that, the cabin's closed up good enough for the season for me. It's been a long ride coming out here, definitely. I've loved every second of it. Gonna get the uh, campsite packed up here and uh, just make sure everything's good for when it starts to snow. I want to give a huge shout out to Brandon who works at my local hardware store back in southern New Hampshire. He hooked me up with these windows for an amazing deal. He watches the channel like uh, that's amazing. I don't know if I can say how much he gave me the windows for because it was literally that good of a deal. But uh, I tried to buy the same window at a retail store and they were in their leftover section and uh, they wanted $400 a window and uh, Buddy gave them to me for literally like no money whatsoever. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you helping support and uh, helping me get materials. Always a nice light breeze in Maine. And with that, I've got camp picked up just maybe a few odds and ends off the ground. I want to give you guys a little tour around it. I know it doesn't have the windows or doors cut out, but I'm sure that you can use your imagination. Before I roll the drone footage, I really want to talk to you about how we found our land, how much we paid for our land, and what the cost of getting the cabin to this point has been so far, and just some other unexpected costs of having an off-grid property. The first thing that I want to talk about is where to find land and where to find land brokers and land dealers that you want to deal with. So the first place to start would definitely be um, online Google land for sale. I would be looking at, you know, Land Watch, Redfin. I would be looking at a mix of, yes, land only websites, but I would also be looking at some real estate websites that have more traditional real estate on it. That's actually where we found our piece. It didn't make it to like a Land Watch site. And so we actually first saw our piece on realtor.com, I believe. Up by my camp, we have about four or five realtors that are YouTube famous. And um, I've dealt with almost every single one of them in my land search. I will say that they were all super professional, but when they have such a big YouTube following, it's very hard to capture their attention. And that's what I needed was a little bit of extra attention. It's my first time buying. I was from five hours away and uh, I felt like I am only going to get one shot at this for the money that I had. And I really wanted it to be... Uh, the right move. So what I did is I looked in the area that I wanted to be in and I got a list of the realtors names and I wrote them down and I gave each realtor a call and then that same week that I called them I that weekend I went up and I actually stopped in the office and introduced myself. These realtors deal with so many phone calls and emails of people who aren't exactly ready to buy land yet that a lot of them have this filter on where it's hard to get a piece of their time. So I went up there and actually introduced myself and shook some hands and let them know that I was in the area looking at lot. And uh, they took me a lot more serious when I did that and they were more willing to work with me. So definitely earn the local realtors vote and they're gonna put in effort. So you should be putting in effort too and showing them a level of commitment. And uh, I feel like that's the best way to uh, establish a relationship and get a deal. There's a couple different types of raw land that you're going to encounter. In my region of Northern Maine, most of the land that you're gonna be finding that's affordable has already been logged by the logging companies. I've tried calling the logging companies and getting an in with them and buying land directly from them, but uh, that's gonna take a little bit more time and effort than I could dedicate to it. Um, I feel like if I went up there and actually took some hands at the logging company and was able to talk to somebody that had a little bit of authority, 
I possibly could have been able to purchase land from them. So that's something I'm going to pursue in the future. So when we found our piece of property, I called the real estate agent and I asked him a couple questions and uh, the property that we ended up buying checked off a lot of the boxes. One of the things that was really big for us was sun exposure. We really wanted a south facing property. We wanted to be able to grow crops up there eventually or just have nice weather in the summer when we're up there. And so the second thing that I did was I got the coordinates of the property and I looked on Google Earth and I looked what was around and I did research and I watched YouTube videos and I tried to gather as much information about the region and the road um, that the property was on. I looked at properties that had been sold in the past to try to get an idea of what the graph le looked like for prices of land. Once we saw that our piece of property really lined up for what we were looking for, we made an appointment that weekend to go down and see it with the realtor. We showed up on time to our appointment, really looked the part of serious land buyers. My wife and I look younger, but we wanted to be taken serious. And so that's kind of the attitude that we put forward to the realtor. Like, hey, I'm not some young kid who's looking to get his money stolen up in northern Maine. Like, I'm here to stay. I'm here to establish myself in the community. I need to be treated as so. Prior to seeing the property that we bought, I must have seen over 20 different properties. And uh, we didn't call the real estate agent on every single one. We would go see properties that didn't check our boxes, but just to look at them and just to be able to say no and practice saying, no, this is not the piece of property for us. So we met our real estate agent up at the piece of property and it took me about an hour to realize that I really wanted to buy this piece of property. There were some things that I loved. It had a roughed in driveway, which was a logging road. Our land had recently been logged when we went up and first saw it and it's still recently logged. But uh, that didn't matter much to me because I wasn't looking for a piece of land to hold as a timber harvest. And there was enough trees where I could have built my own log cabin if I wanted to. But I knew that I wanted to go dimensional lumber. And so when we went up and looked at our lot, I fell in love with it. One of the very first things that I saw when I got out of the car were humongous moose tracks. Um, within 10 minutes of walking the property, I had seen moose tracks, deer tracks, moose scat and deer scat and I could hear a brook running down. Uh, it's a seasonal brook, but I could hear it running down from the high point of the property and I could follow it. And uh, so that really spoke to me. One of the things that was really going for me is that they did a bad job of cleaning up the logging after they were done. So they just left piles of slash and brush. And that's okay to me because I'm going to put in the sweat equity and I have cleared it. And um, wood's pretty easy to clear with a big fire. Definitely, I've learned that. So if you're not afraid of a little bit of a hard work and controlling a fire, uh, logged land's no big deal. Our land was originally 46 acres that was split into a 30 acre plot and a 16 acre plot. I originally had the opportunity to buy all 46 acres, but it was more money than I was willing to spend. And so we made a negotiation and put in an offer on the 30 acres. We ended up buying our 30 acres for $35,000. Owner finance was an option. And so we took that route in the early beginning of the land just to make sure that it's actually what we wanted to do. Our seller would have have accepted $8,000 down on the whole 46 acres, but instead I ended up putting down 10 on the 30, leaving me a balance of $25,000 that I was going to pay at 6% interest over 10 years. Since then, I've made some very big payments on the land and just took care of the payment because that's not something that I wanted to have over me, but know that it originally did set up as an owner finance deal. One of the things that's really amazing about an owner finance deal is yes, you might pay a little bit of bit more money for the land, but you get it deeded after you put down your substantial down payment. So the land is now yours. Yes, you're making a payment for it, but it's different than owning a house where the bank holds on to the deed. So once we bought our land for 35,000, I put 10,000 down and then we were left with the $25,000 balance. Our payments were going to be I believe $380 a month for 10 years with no prepayment penalty. I made sure that there's no prepayment penalty because I own a couple businesses and when cash flow was good one month, I really loved throwing some big amounts at it. Not every land that you see is gonna be owner finance. If it's gonna be a perfect piece of property on the side of a mountain, that's your dream or picturesque 
off-grid homestead situation most likely the owner is not going to finance it but if it's logged land that they've had in the family for years that's a really good opportunity to own or finance I want to tell you that cash is king and when you do have cash you can negotiate one thing one of the things that I can tell you especially up in the northern woods is don't feel bad about negotiating most of these people have had their this land in their family for many generations and land in Maine used to sell for $25 an acre. Right now land in Maine sells for probably $1,300 an acre post-logged but pre-logged it sells for probably around $1,700. Once we finalized the deal it was about $2,000 in closing to have the title company sign me over the deed and do all of the title work and we also got a survey done on the property just to make sure that the property lines were fit. The next thing that we needed to do was put an access point in that was suitable for our pickup truck and for the wood delivery truck to get down. This was one of the biggest expenses that we paid with the land. To have the proper driveway put in was about $8,000 and we got a pretty good deal from the guy that maintains the road that we're on. He brought over some pretty heavy equipment and ran them for days on end. The thing to do was to buy the equipment to build the cabin. I own a couple of different businesses and so I had a lot of the equipment that was needed. Drills, saws, nail guns, simple framing tools, things like that. There's a local mill about 20 minutes away that's been running since the early 1900s and um, everywhere I go I try to make friends with the people that are in my community because like there's no such thing as being off grid. You need the help of somebody else definitely and so I just try to earn everybody's help and I also try to be helpful. It's genuine. And so we get established a good relationship with a mill that is down about 20 minutes away from our camp and that's where I got 99% of all my wooden materials and they would actually drop it off to me when it was too big of a load for my pickup truck to bring in. We did a 20 by 12 stick framed cabin with a 12 foot tall front wall and an 8 foot tall back wall. Materials all together right now and we have not finished the inside. I am about $9,000 in and that's like screws, nails, all of the wood, the foundation, the, con the concrete foundation, stones. I'm not going to include the, the $200 in gas it takes every time I go up. It's a five hour ride each way and uh, my cousin was coming up to help me and his time is valuable and his time is worth money so I paid for that as well. Um, altogether, I feel like I'm probably invested about $55,000 into this off-grid journey. Sounds like a lot, but honestly, to have this experience and to have the deed to that land and to have a place that I can go whenever I want is worth more money to me than ever. And, uh, and maybe one day I'll sell this camp so somebody else can enjoy it, but I'm definitely not done buying land and building cabins. I feel like the forest has washed me anew and I hope that everybody gets that experience and if there's any way that I can help anybody I, I, I know some realtors up in my area I know where there's some plots of land for sale and I would love to help somebody else live it, uh, and try to accomplish this goal or this dream. Thank you very much for watching and supporting these videos. I wasn't even I'm not a YouTuber. Like Dave Whipple's a YouTuber who builds cabins. I have three different businesses, small businesses that I run down here in southern New Hampshire. And uh, like I can't just go to this cabin and, and build it 24-7 and sink YouTube money into it. This was all out of mine and my wife's pocket. And um, just a lot of hard work and determination got us here. And if I can do it, then I know that anybody can do it. And if I can help anybody in any way, if you need, if you want to talk about starting a business, starting a side hustle, buying land, if I can el elaborate any of the points that I just talked about in this video, please let me know. Thank you so much. See you on the next one. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. Uh, I love doing that recap of like season one of us out there. I can't wait to get back out this spring. Uh, I've loved answering the emails and the comments. Uh, keep those up definitely and you'll be seeing more of us. Thanks guys.